So this is a demonstration of a new PID uh, oscillation uh, detection algorithm I've been uh, working on. So here we are uh, running SITL with a uh, real flight with a big uh, motor glider uh, and here's mission planner. And then I'm also streaming uh, PID uh, information to MATLAB. So in this case, I'm looking at the pitch uh, PID so we can see the target and uh, rate and the actual rate. And then this is the P, uh, I and D components uh, individually. So you would add all these uh, together and then that would be the output of your PID controller. So everyone's uh, seen that uh, basic graph before. So the new uh, stuff here is this. So we're filtering, in this case, the actual angle. So you can see uh, the actual angle that, or the actual rate we're at is dark blue and then we're filtering it at three different uh, frequencies is just a basic uh, exponential filter so this higher number in red follows the blue uh, quite closely uh, medium one is the black which uh, follows a bit slower and then very slow is this uh, light blue uh, which is almost flat so then we take the difference between uh, those three filters and the original signal and then we get this so as compared to the blue the uh, actual angle moves quite a lot, whereas compared to the red that follows the blue closely, it moves much less. So then this bottom graph is just the amplitude uh, of these uh, signals. So again, we can see the red moves less, so the number is uh, lower. So we do that for both the actual uh, and the target. So that's uh, exactly the same thing for the target angle. So then that gives us uh, three amplitudes for each uh, of the target and the actual. And then we just uh, take the ratio of them. So here are our three, amp uh, three frequencies again. And then this is uh, the target divided by the actual. So this red line divided by uh, this red line. So we're less than one, which means that we are uh, far from an oscillation. Above one would be oscillating. Uh, and actually, because we do both the actual and the target, it means that as I'm steering the plane about, we don't see the oscillations induced by the target moving. It, it cancels them out. So you can see that there's a much bigger amplitude uh, for both of them here, but because they're staying equal, the ratio is roughly the same. So then this is the same amplitude, but done for the P, I and D components. So we can see that P is making up the vast majority of the uh, control uh, output here. And we might just be able to see that at the slowest frequency, which is the dotted line here, uh, P is actually contributing slightly less. And that's because I is contributing more at the slowest frequency, which is what we'd expect to see. So that's that. So let's have a look at what happens to these graphs. Uh, when we uh, increase the gains. So let's uh, increase P first. So let's try uh, two and drive it about a little bit. So you can see these numbers have gone up slightly and that says we are getting closer to an oscillation. And because they're above one, we actually uh, are uh, oscillating slightly so that is probably just uh, overshoot rather than a uh, continual uh, oscillation. So let's uh, turn them up a little bit more. So let's go to three. So as we do inputs, because the plane is so stable when it's just in uh, level flight, it actually is quite hard to get it to do anything. But when we give it inputs, you can see now our gain is definitely too high. We've got quite a big ratio here. Uh, so let's put this back down to get our... So one of the disadvantages of this slow filter is that uh, once it goes up, it takes quite a long time to come down again. So although we're actually not oscillating now, then the numbers are still uh, on the way down. So if we... So uh, set the number so high that there was a bad oscillation that you might see. So some people have seen this uh, like on flying wings uh, when they take off. Uh, 
so it shoots right up and actually that isn't as bad as i was expecting let's try eight so for example if your wind estimate is a bit wrong when you first take off you might see this so we can see these numbers shooting right off uh, the top of the graph there so that might be a trigger for us to turn down the gains uh, temporarily so let's uh, put this back wait for them to come back onto the graph I'm actually going quite fast let's slow down So you can see, despite there being actually quite a big offset here between the target and actual, because of the filtering, we don't pick that up. It's not an oscillation, so we so we don't uh, pick it up. So uh, like a steady state offset like this doesn't make a difference, whereas uh, oscillations do. So that's much more sensible. So let's look at increasing D. So let's go uh, to point 0.1. So actually, uh, increase of D by that much actually hasn't done very much uh, for us here. So let's uh, increase it more. It's 0.2. Again, in fact, if anything, our oscillations are getting uh, smaller. So let's uh, go right up to 0.5. Again, it's got smaller, and you can see that now the D is uh, so big it's starting to make up a significant portion, 40% uh, here of the uh, output of the controller. So let's go all the way to one. So it's still not doing anything nasty. Let's keep on going to two. Ah, so now when I release the stick, you can see it's wobbling a bit and that wobbling uh, dies out quite quickly. So it's not being uh, picked up by this uh, solely filtered amplitude, but the value is definitely increasing. So let's go even further. So there's definitely an oscillation now and you can see these numbers have shot right off. So what we would probably do is set a threshold, maybe one and a half or two. And when uh, these numbers go above that, you say, right, we need to turn down the gains. So from this left graph, we can see there's definitely an oscillation. And from the right graph, we can see, oh, it's definitely coming from D. D is the, the biggest component by far. So let's turn that down again. I see our oscillation stopped but our number is taking a little while to come back. So that's definitely something that could be improved is the response time uh, of this uh, graph. So this uh, is quite a nice way of detecting, and you can be quite sure when it does detect a nasty oscillation such as this one, and perhaps you could even uh, read a little more into it and set some lower thresholds for approaching oscillations although uh, detecting uh, sort of oncoming oscillations is quite difficult uh, but the numbers definitely do increase so you could uh, use that perhaps as basis for a really fast uh, auto-tune just replicate what you might do uh, if you were tuning manually uh, wait turn it up until it oscillates and then turn it back by some ratio so we could do that for p uh, and d or we could use uh, something such as the Ziegler-Nichols method where we use P only and then uh, calculate the frequency of oscillations uh, and use that to calculate uh, IND. So this is for plane. So let's uh, load up a copter and look at uh, how this behaves for copter. So here we are back with a copter uh, example. So again, in this case, we're looking at the roll PID and this is the uh, target and actual as everyone's seen. Uh, before and then we're just filtering it uh, in the same way so uh, in fact in this example with the uh, G 
tune I happen to have on this uh, tricopter is detecting uh, maybe my gain's a little bit too high. It's it's oscillating. And if we look at the target and actual, I think I would probably agree with it there. It's definitely uh, oscillating a little. So let's uh, have a look uh, what we can do to improve that. So, so it's a roll in this instance. So because uh, it's a higher frequency uh, filter here, so that's the uh, red line is higher. Perhaps that suggests it's D, and we've definitely got a, quite a large uh, proportion of D. So let's look at dropping uh, the D gay down a little bit. So. So that's uh, definitely uh, reduced the contribution of D, but our numbers here actually haven't come down a huge amount. So perhaps we need to bring down P a little bit as well. So let's try uh, that. So the numbers are going down, but perhaps not enough, but try a bit more. So if I actually, uh, I'm in circle mode here, if I use the sticks a little bit, we perhaps get a bit of a better uh, idea of what's going on just because it was, uh, we were sort of very zoomed in. We weren't getting a big picture. Now I've uh, got some sort of zoomed out data. It's come straight back down uh, to one. So again, that's uh, possibly a disadvantage. We might want to de-weight uh, this uh, ratio when uh, both the target and actual are uh, very small uh, amplitudes. So that's uh, how we can use it to improve a tune. So let's look at what this shows uh, when our tune is very bad. So let's increase D by a factor of 10. So straight away, oscillations and these numbers have shot up. So we could use a threshold on this perhaps to uh, detect the oscillations. And again, uh, the slower frequency is not detecting as much uh, oscillations as the faster one. So the red is, is completely off the screen. Uh, so let's put this back. And we could tell that it was D because the proportion of D uh, was much higher than P. So we can use the left-hand graph to say we're oscillating and we can use the right-hand graph to tell is it P or is it D. And in some cases, it's actually quite hard to tell. So in almost uh, all instances, if D is bigger than P, it's D. But if they're quite close, it might be hard to tell. So perhaps instead of picking just one to reduce, we might reduce uh, both P and D in that case. So I think you perhaps would use a method where you reduce it by some amount and then you uh, apply a time constant. So it is continually trying to get back to its original value. So again, we've got a little bit zoomed in here. So if I just move the stick about, we can see we get a much nicer uh, value. And you can see that, for example, at the lower frequency, as we saw with the plane, I is having a much bigger contribution, the dotted green line here. And again, we'd expect that. Uh, so let's look at what happens if I, we set our P too big. So let's uh, go up by double. So oscillations uh, detected here, but looking at the copter itself, uh, perhaps you wouldn't uh, be able to tell, but we definitely detected some oscillations. Uh, it's a little bit hard with real flight, usually for such a high frequency Oh, there it goes. You can see it now. But for such high frequency oscillations, often you would hear it before you would uh, you would be able to see it. So this is definitely saying we're oscillating, and P is much bigger than D, so it's definitely P. So let's uh, turn down that again. So this is quite a nice method. So the uh, hopefully the the direct use case will be we're definitely oscillating, let's reduce our gains. And you would perhaps set quite a high threshold here, maybe two or one and a half. Uh, so you could, you wouldn't uh, unnecessarily reduce the gains. And then perhaps when we have a bit more confidence in this methodology, we might look to develop a, a really quick uh, tuner that would do a sort of manual equivalent tune uh, in just uh, maybe a few seconds that would take you uh, from nasty oscillations, not being able to fly, 
uh, to something that definitely will fly and maybe it would uh, even we could use it to increase gains until we see oscillations and then reduce them again so it would give you something uh, perhaps better than many people can do manually uh, but not as good as a full uh, autotune anyway so i think the next step is to look at uh, implementing this in Pilot and logging the data and hopefully flying some rear vehicles and, and getting some data to look at.